Welcome to another video uh, regarding MPLAB. Um, MPLAB has one um, function called logic analyzers, and it tries to simulate an actual hardware uh, simulator where um, logic analyzer, where you can actually look graphically at your outputs changing um, as they change, well, almost as they change. So what I, what I decided to do for this video is just wrote a very, very simple program uh, in uh, assembly language for PIC 18F1220, where it goes through and does some simple setting up the port A as all being output, clears it, and set our speed to four megahertz for our uh, oscillator speed, uh, which means the instruction is running at one megahertz. And then in the main loop, all I'm doing is basically incrementing port A. Uh, so port A would take on either a 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1. Once it reaches 4, it is no longer less than 4, so it clears it and starts over again. So this loop, all it's doing is going 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And so let's, let's, do, let's go ahead and go through and compile this thing so you can kind of see what it's doing. I'm going to compile it. And traditionally, what we've done is when we do a debug, it comes back. Uh, when we do a debug, uh, we'll, uh, let's say, put a breakpoint somewhere at the beginning of the loop. As in, you know that you can't put it on the label. You have to put it on instruction where it has actually a presence in the memory. And then what we'll do is just in tradition, we looked at the variable values. In this case, is port A. So as I single step, uh, let's, let's go through it once. So if I hit the green button, which runs through it to the next breakpoint, you notice that port A turned red and became four, became one. If I hit it again, becomes two. If I hit it again, becomes three. So every time through the loop, port A gets incremented by one. And then once it reaches three, um, it'll uh, loop back to zero. So that's all it's doing, is making port the two least significant bits of port A go one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, and on and on, okay? So that's all it does. So that was fine. I saw it, it that's what it's doing. But what if I want to look at port A, bit zero, and bit one graphically so I can see the square waves go up and down as they are happening? And that's what a logic analyzer does. So what you could do, you could go to Windows, Simulator, and there's a logic analyzer right there. So from under window, you come down to the simulator. Under there, there's a logic analyzer. You click on that logic analyzer, comes up. Now, uh, initially, it's going to be blank. When you see it, it's going to look like this. So you got to set it, do a little bit of a setup. So the way you set it up, you click on these little icon down here, which looks to me like a like a hammer and something else. So if you click on it, it comes up and you can decide what you want to look at as first thing, add and delete pins. I really don't want to look at R2 because there's nothing there. I'm only playing with the two least significant R0 and one. You can look at all kinds of other things if you want as well. And then, and then the other one that is useful is the properties. You can either have the X domain, the time domain be based on instruction cycles or you can set it on real time. If I set it on instruction cycle. That means every tick is single instruction cycles, which is kind of a little bit easier to deal with. And then, and then the pin color, of course, you can pick up in whatever color you want. I, I didn't choose. Uh, oh, this, the colors are fine. Uh, you can save it for future use, or you can load the old one that you have. In our case, that's not big enough to save it, so I'll just say, okay. And this is the screen you're going to get. One other thing before I forget, go back here. Um, there, there is a limit, uh, the limit uh, on how many pins you can have, how many pieces of data you can collect is a thousand records. So when you get, I'm sorry, 10,000 records. So once you get to 10,000 records, you can't go any further. So you, you have to either delete this stuff so you can get more or refresh it or do something like that to get more data. Now 10,000 sounds like a lot, but if your system is running at one microsecond, 10,000 is like 10, micros, 10 millisecond and you're basically filled out the buffer. So. Okay, so that's cool. Now that we have, that we went under the window, selected the logic analyzer, we have compiled our code and our comp core is, code is compiled and looks fine. We put a breakpoint someplace interesting to start looking at things. So we set it right here. We say, okay, then I'm, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna 
actually let me let me stop so what i'll do is i'll start the debugger fresh it's usually a good idea to start your stop your debugger and start it fresh so things um so the past doesn't affect your result the past activity doesn't result in the uh, the results you're going to see when you go through it so now i'm going to go to my logic analyzer sit here and say okay so let's go ahead and now we are here. We haven't run it. Everything is zero. Both RA zero and RA one are both zero. Nothing exciting is happening. So let's let's let it go through the loop once. So when I hit this one, the debugger will run until it hits this. And since this is an infinite loop in a sense, it's just going to run through this every time I hit the little green button which says continue. So I ran through it. What happens? Well, it looked like R A zero went to one. So I went from zero, zero to zero, one. That makes kind of sense. So next time I should have two. That means this should go up and the other one should go to zero. Sure enough. Oh, the other way, there it is. So, so it came back and now I have uh, R A one is one and R A is two. And then of course the next one, this is kind of exciting. Now we have three. And if I keep doing that, it goes back to zero and repeat itself. So now, instead of me looking at the data in, in the form of zeros and one, I can look at it graphically and sometimes that's nicer. One uh, other hint is if, if you do too many of these or you want to zoom in, you can just right click on this one. It's got both zoom in and zoom out. You can set it to auto range as well, but I, that doesn't seem to work as well. Um, so. And then, of course, you can remove markers if you put anything on it. And then this property just kind of allows you to label the graphs and things like that if you want to print it for sharing or whatever. OK, so that's pretty much as a logic analyzer available in MPLAB. Oh, that's been helpful. Thank you.